Okay, so WrestleMania 29. Overall, I thought this was a, a a pretty awesome wrestling show from top to bottom. However, though, it just pretty much all of the finishes to the big money matches really left me with a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I just thought all the wrong guys went over. Um, but you know, it is what it is. I, I, it was kind of it was a little bit too predictable. I think the WWE they stuck with the plans. I don't think they really changed anything, and I don't think they I don't think they um, the right guys went over. I, I really don't. It just left a really, really bad taste in my mouth. But uh, from a wrestling standpoint, just not a lot to complain about. You had some awesome stuff from top to bottom. Uh, the first match of the night, you had The Shield uh, taking on Randy Orton, Sheamus, and The Big Show. The crowd was kind of dead for this. I mean, none of the faces were over at all. I mean, um, I think Sheamus got a lot of heat. Randy Orton just got no reactions. And um, I, I would say John Moxley, or... Dean Ambrose was definitely the most over guy in this match. I heard a lot of Let's Go Ambrose chants. Uh, Tyler Black pulled off some awesome spots. There were some great heat segments with, you know, Black and uh, Moxley, you know, isolating the big show. So, um, yeah, just just a nice, solid, old-school tag match. I, I really love the uh, the stuff with the big show getting frustrated because he wasn't getting the hot tag. You know, this came out pretty awesome, I, I would say. But um, definitely Randy Orton is, you know, I don't know if it was the steroid scandal or... I don't know. It just the guy's just so stale right now, and um, he's definitely in need of a heel turn. That didn't happen. A lot of the expected heel turns on this show uh, did not come true. Uh, the cash in didn't happen. Just a lot of things that I think people were really anticipating from a storyline standpoint just did not come true tonight, or did not happen tonight. So I think a lot of people were kind of frustrated by that. All right, next up we have Mark Henry versus Ryback. I'll be honest, this bored the fuck out of me. This was slow. Kind of surprised, though, by the finish, you know, uh, with Henry falling on Ryback's neck to get the victory. That was pretty cool. Ryback was not over tonight. He was getting booed. So I'm glad that they didn't put the belt on Ryback at WrestleMania. I, I think that would have been a mistake. And, you know, I, I, I don't think the title win would have came off good at all. And I think tonight's match with Henry is kind of indicated what would have happened if they did put the title on Ryback. It just, I don't know. Uh, but, um... Yeah, this is definitely the weakest match of the night. Uh, next up, we have Daniel Bryan and Kane taking on uh, Dolph Ziggler and uh, Big E with AJ at ringside. Uh, you know, this, uh, you know, like you guys know, I'm not a big fan of Daniel Bryan and Kane tagging up together. You know, obviously, I think a lot of people are frustrated with uh, Daniel Bryan's character right now. But I'm not going to lie, this was an uh, excellent match. This was um, a nice feel-good moment for Daniel Bryan after what happened at last year's WrestleMania. Uh, they did an awesome tease with AJ. You know, kissing Ziggler and, and, and Brian trying to get the victory right away. So that was pretty cool. Uh, when Ziggler and Brian were in the ring together, they were awesome. You know, great fast-paced action. They looked very crisp. Uh, Kane was kind of in the match more than I would have liked to have seen him in there for. So, uh, you know, the match didn't really reach his potential. But, you know, the finish was pretty awesome. Like I said, it was a nice feel-good moment for Daniel Bryan. Uh, he had the crowd rocking. Uh, tonight, you know, the the yes, everyone was doing the yes chant after the match, so uh, it came off. Uh, it was a nice WrestleMania moment, I would say. Uh, next up, we had uh, Chris Jericho versus Fandango. Uh, I thought this was excellent. I thought Jericho ca carried Fandango to an awesome match. Well, not awesome, but you know, it, it was solid enough. He, I thought Fandango looked, uh, he looked good. This is the first time I've really seen him wrestle, and um, he did some awesome counters to the walls of Jericho. He looked vicious out there. Uh, Jericho tried to make this more of a brawl at first, but um, as the match progressed, you saw some, you know, it, it came down to more of a submission style match with, uh, you know, just a lot of, like I said, a lot of awesome counters to the walls of Jericho. Uh, I think Jericho kicked out of the leg drop off the top rope, which came off pretty good, and um, I think Jericho's knee actually buckled that enabled Fandango to get the small package to get the victory. So th this came off really well. I uh, would have loved to have seen Jericho go over, but... Um, uh, Ziggler didn't cash in, so I'm not too upset about it. I would just love to see Jericho and Ziggler for the world title before Jericho, um, you know, takes some time off again. But we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, next up, we have uh, after the Diddy performance, we had Del Rio versus Swagger for the world title. You know, the fans just did not give a fuck about this. You heard a lot of "Let's Go Ziggler" chants uh, during the match, but. At the same time, I, I thought it was still solid, though. Like, I, I thought the effort was excellent from both guys. They just really struggled to get the fans to react to anything. Uh, Del Rio really impressed me. I think Del Rio impressed a lot of people tonight. Even my brother texted me and he said, Wow, man, Del Rio looks really impressive. 
And uh, I, I thought he did. I thought both guys really busted their ass. I thought the finish came off excellent with, you know, Swagger beating him down on the outside with Zeb Coulter. And uh, once he got into the ring, the transition into the cross arm breaker just came off really, really well. But uh, it just didn't seem like it was the right time for Ziggler to cash in. Uh, maybe they just didn't have enough time to do it. But um, I think it's definite we're going to get a Ziggler Del Rio program in the coming months. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, next up, we have Undertaker versus CM Punk. Um, this was excellent. This is a lot better than I thought it would be. Their chemistry was not that bad. You know, their chemistry during their 2009 feud, I thought it was, you know, pretty mediocre. But, um, Taker looked good. T Taker looked a lot better than I expected. I, I didn't realize he was so young. I thought he was probably in his early 50s. He's only 48. So, obviously, I, th I think we'll probably see Taker wrestle a couple more WrestleManias and we'll, we'll get the big Cena match probably next year. So, uh, not really surprising that they had Taker go over. I felt like CM Punk was the perfect guy to end the streak. But, you know, as the match progressed, I think a lot of people kind of lost hope. But don't get me wrong, though. This was, this was a lot better than I thought it was. It, it, was the one, it was the one Taker match over the last couple of years which didn't really rely on a whole bunch of near falls, you know, for the match to get to that next level. I thought the facial expressions were good. I thought there was a lot, just a lot of interesting stuff. The Anaconda, Anaconda Vice spot when they both stared at each other, that was pretty cool. The uh, the table spot where I think Punk hurt his, uh, I think he might have hurt his knee. Um, that added a lot of drama to the match. Uh, the transition from the go to sleep, Taker actually no sold the go to sleep. And then he countered it into a tombstone, or went for the tombstone after that. That was really, really creative, and I just thought that came off really awesome. So, uh yeah, I, I, both guys had a, you know, just Punk and Taker, great match. You know, you could definitely argue this as being the match of the night. Um, a, lot, a lot better than I expected. You know, I, I just thought Punk would have a tough time struggling with his offense, you know, getting Taker up for the go-to-sleep. And it didn't look pretty when he did it, but um, the match still came off pretty good, man. I, I'll give this about four and a quarter, maybe even four and a half. But personally for me, my match of the night was Brock Lesnar and Triple H. Um, you know, the finish kind of disgusted me. I, I was really, the, 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 towards the end of the match, just the drama with the uh, Kamara, Triple H actually locking in the Kamara on the steel steps. Just, you know, that, that whole ending sequence just had me on the edge of my feet, man, or edge of my seat. It just really, um, I was really pulling for Lesnar to win this thing. Uh, but uh, looks like they, it looks like they want Triple H's retirement match to be a bigger deal, possibly main event of SummerSlam or main event. You know, some type of big money pay-per-view. So, it doesn't really surprise me. You know, HBK at ringside, kind of, it made Lesnar look strong. This this was more of like a two-on-one match for a lot of the match, to be honest with you. So, it's not like Lesnar looked weak at all. For Lesnar to fight off that Kamara for, you know, f about maybe two or three minutes, that that was just, just a lot of drama there. Uh, I thought Lesnar looked great, though. He looked in great shape. Just a lot of great hardcore action. Very, very brutal. Um, you know, the... Uh, this just came off like a war, man. It came off like a war. This was definitely the match of the night. Uh, they they did struggle though, like trying to get the fans into it. I, I like you know I, I just feel like the WWE universe or whatever that they, they see both these guys as legit heels. So neither guy was really that over. You know the the fans really really weren't pulling for Triple H the way they should have. Uh, so yeah, de definitely a, a Triple H heel turn is definitely needed in the future, but I doubt it's going to happen. But. Uh, you know, hopefully Lesnar sticks around and doesn't, you know, go home this time. Uh, you know, I heard that they signed Lesnar to an extension. So it's kind of frustrating to see Lesnar do the job. But, um, you know, it is what it is. This is definitely a lot better than their SummerSlam match, obviously. I thought this was definitely the match of the night by far, in my opinion. I'm going to give this a legit four and a half stars. Um, so the main event, we have The Rock versus John Cena for the WWE title. You know, I thought it ended up being an excellent match. The, the the beginning, they got off to a tough start. You know, some of the, I feel like they kind of rushed into the near falls. And when they started doing the rock bottom and attitude adjustments, at first, none of the fans bought into any of those near falls. They just felt really forced. And um, yeah, it just went into near fall overkill. It, it really did. It, you know, more so than any other match I've ever seen. They just... They just totally relied on near falls. I mean, um, you just saw so much of it. It, it just caught, it kind of got repetitive seeing, you know, attitude adjustment into the rock bottom, people's elbow. Um, you know, the, the thing that saved this match was the spot when Cena did last year's WrestleManias, you know, when he did the people's elbow. And then he kind of swayed the rock into 
you know, going for the rock bottom, and then he did the you can't see me thing and hit the attitude adjustment. I thought that was cool because it played off last year's match. So that was pretty interesting. The, the great thing about this match compared to last year's is The Rock looked great. I, I thought The Rock looked in pretty good ring shape. I think him having the program with Punk was a great way to get him ready for this match. So I felt like the chemistry was a lot better this year, but the crowd and the atmosphere, it was probably a little weaker than the Miami match. So that kind of hurt it for me. But overall, it was kind of unpredictable. You know, I, I really didn't know which way it was going to go. Uh, as 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 the match progressed, you kind of you kind of got the feeling that you know the the Cena heel turn it's just not going to work. It just it just doesn't make sense. It's just it's just never really going to happen. Um, you know, the, this is more about the Rock giving back to the WWE, giving back to the fans, and doing the right thing and putting over the younger talent and John Cena. That's what it was. They stuck to the plan. They didn't give us anything shocking. But um, I don't know. Hopefully, the WWE makes things interesting in the future. I think they need to, you know, listen to the fans and, and just go with what will be more interesting because this, this just left a bad taste in my mouth with all the finishes and just the wrong guys going over and all, all of the three big money matches. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see what happens tonight on Raw. Okay, take it easy.